shack, safe, happy and creative, stay home and craft. My name's Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK and we're getting together to doodle some ammonites. Today it's highlights and lowlights. Ain't that the truth, hey? Eh? Come on in, let's see who's here and let's get started. What's the sound like? I hope that it's okay. Cameras are ready, I'm ready. I've doodled ahead a little bit. Doodle, doodle, doodle. Come on in. Let's see who's gonna join in today. And Paul's in the building with you, our lovely Paul Church. So he's there if you have any questions. Uh, I hope that it's working. I'm feeling a little bit isolated here. Can anybody hear me? Or is it, sound is nice and clear. Thank you. Good morning. See, I only need to see a couple of little, little bit of, from a hot Estepona. Wow. Lorraine. Hola. <laughs> nice to have your company. Come on in, Jill. Nice to see you too. And thank you for sending me that wonderful, uh, I just caught sight of it before I went live. Um, Jill sent me a really interesting uh, article about an art project using ammonites. Very interesting. So I look forward to reading that later. And that's what we're doing today, isn't it? So have you got your cup of tea? Are you ready to rock and roll? Come on then. Just for an hour, let's just park everything outside the door. Let's just relax, hey? Let's just kill, let's just stay calm hmm? and forget about what's going on. I got, we got so much going on in our lives. You and me, you know. My dad is, um, he has good days and bad days. Thank you for asking. And um, so I'm on my way over to the hospital after the shack to go and see him in Gillingham. Uh, one day at a time, you know, one day at a time. That's the only way to deal with this, isn't it? You know, it's like same as most things really. But one thing I do know is it is never the event. Good Lord, look at them. <laughs> it is never the event, but how we respond to it that will ultimately affect us. Ain't that the truth? So it's how we respond to it. It's not what's happening. It's how we react to it. So let's react properly. That's the best thing, isn't it? One day at a time. Be all right. And breathe. Everybody happy? Good morning. Come on in. Yeah. Cool. I tell you what, I need this. I need this shack shack gathering of friends as much as you do. I really do. And Sunday I'm on telly again. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be lovely. And, um, and you'll understand. If I haven't done a lot of prep and I'm winging it again, you understand. You know the score. You know what's going on. That's why this, the, the blog is... Uh, being neglected as well at the moment. I'm just running around like a blue-ass fly. <laughs> and some things just have to slip. And one of the things that's slipping is the blog. And the other thing that's slipping is um, prep for the television. But I would hope that you absolutely understand. And, and I'm pretty certain um, that I'll be able to handle a couple of hours on telly. So on Sunday, 3 o'clock until 5 o'clock, double hour, and it's a shout out to our darling friend, Jane Nestorenko. Do you remember Jane? We lost her to cancer. Hardcore. Beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. And she, she um, was a great illustrator, great colorist, great artist, good woman. And, um, and before she died, she entrusted her artwork to us. And so her art lives on. She lives on in her art. And, uh, and on, on, um, on Sunday... I'm, I'm going to be showcasing her fabulous stamps, Christmas and floral, because we're still falling under that Christmas umbrella on television. So I thought, well, let's take Jane's Christmas things on. She's got so. But what we've done, what Jazz here, uh, what we've done is we've we've bijoued them. We've made them smaller. They're so gorgeous. We just literally hit the reduce button, tidied the artwork up, and uh, really lovely, 
really lovely. So if you've got the large Jane Nestor Enco stamps, and many, many thousands of people do have that, wait till you see the same art in miniature. It's pretty spectacular. So, of course, you've got the clarity quality, um, but you see our system and the way we make stamps has changed since we, we made the large stamps. And now we can actually, we can reduce artwork to not, not minuscule, but much, much smaller, and it doesn't compromise the, the detail. Fabulous. Wait till you see this. So beautiful. It's like, wow. I thought it might be. And when we started playing and made some prototypes, we were right. And uh, yes, yeah, so enjoy them. Great price. Great. Yeah, just great stamps. And I shall be, I shall be doing a proper comparison. Uh, using the small ones, showing the large ones, so you can see, because it's the same, same design. And today, we're on the Ammonites. So, how are you doing? I actually got in early this morning and had a couple of hours of, um, well, hour and a half, of doing my homework and adding the highlights, you know, with the rubber. So, just to recap, let's take a look. And uh, let's get the other glasses on and, uh, and we'll just pick up where we left off. So, you, you know, if you're, if you're new to the fold, what we were doing, we just, we doodled some ammonites, didn't we? We doodled some different under the sea. We took our designer parchment. We drew through, because you can, we drew on the front, the dull side. This is a real quick recap. So that's the one we're going to do next week. So, for example, you can draw straight through, you see, like that, look. And then when we did that, let's fast forward a little bit to this one. Then we turned over to the shiny side and we took our, uh, this is the fastest recap in the world. Then we took our Faber-Castell white rubber eraser and we took out colour, you see. So make sure you're on the shiny side and then you can take out colour and add highlights. Look, see how it, you can eliminate the colour? It's really cool. Look. And when you turn it over, because we drew with the ink on this side, it doesn't compromise the line art. So that's what we did. And my, my suggestion to you was, oh, and then we also, we added with the white Posca pens, we added white detail. So this is the front and this is the back. So you can't see the white. Look, let me go again slowly. See these two here? This is the back. It's shiny, right? When you turn it over, there's the white pen work. You see? See, there's the white pen work. So, and then if you want to, you can, as I did earlier this morning, you can go back over with the black. Like, let me just show you, for example, here, if I want to, I can go back in on the front now and I can add a really crisp line. So all the time, what we're doing, look, this is actually adding like a shadow, isn't it? And straight away, you can feel the benefits of doodling and colouring. So around we go. And we just stay on the outer edge. There you go. And those white Posca pens, they're pretty special. They're pretty good. And they work, as you can see, really beautifully on, um, on the parchment. So the dull side is the front and the shiny side is the ink impregnated side. So I thought today, what would be really cool, let's have a look. What we're going to do now, I'd started a little bit around this one and this one. You can see this looks darker and deeper. And that's because I started bringing in pencils on the back. So like grey pencil work. Do you see where it's darker? You can see exactly what I'm doing here. And to do that, I, I mean, I've got my polychromos, okay? So I've got my big deluxe tin of polychromos. There's the colouring ones and there's the, so this little lot here is supposed to be all greys, but that's all right. Okay, 
But what you can get, if you haven't got the big tin, is this set. See, you've got the greys. So here you've got um, you've got Payne's grey, the really dark grey. It's like a black, but it's not black. Um, dark greys, you've got different greys. This is a pack of 12, which is well worth investing. These are the kind of the, the colours that aren't in the big tin of 60. So you've got various greys. You've got a really nice pinky fleshy colour. You've got um, gold. You've got copper and silver. You've got a really nice, this is like a, an ivory or a, this is a cream colour, which is like a really lovely Victorian yellow. Then you've got an ivory, which is nice. And that sky blue is a very, I use it all the time. This is a really good one. So if you, if you want to splash on a set of 12, these are, these are really, we, we buy them in individually. You can, I think you can buy them individually from us too. And then I compiled a set of 12, which works really nicely for shading when you need greys. So I've got my greys here, see, and I've got my, my, um, I've got my Payne's grey. I've got my black from the tin of 60 if I need to go black. And then I picked out a couple of the, the coloured ones as well because you can you can now you see what we're going to do is we're going to flip backwards and forwards and add highlights and low lights and start adding depth so it works really nicely and if you've if you've already what we're going to do now is start creating the layers you see so that this sits on top of that so for example here if this is on top of that, let me just, let's just by way of example, this piece here sits on top of that clearly, right? So let's just turn that over, this here. So if that's the case there, then I need to take, let's take a, a grey like that, and I need to bring in this depth. So the way to do that is to go along that edge there. Let's see if this works, just to show you. It's just defining layers, that's all. It's not hard. But I tell you what, it's so fun to do. Are we close enough? Or should we come in a bit closer? Should we move in a real closer, baby? See, so you've got a bit of light grey there. Let's just feather it out a little bit. I've got lots of tricks to show you today, ways to create depth. Now, this one, paints grey. I treated myself to, I've got the uh, F for eraser. See, these are the sharpeners. Thing is, though, when they get blunt, you start to chew up your pencil, which you don't really want to do. So I treated myself to a new one for the pencils and then my old one, which was, I could feel it was starting to, you know, I, it just got relegated to, um, to eraser. So E for eraser brand new for pencils. So I want to get a little bit of a sharper, that'll do, it's a bit sharp there, Gray. Okay. So just suggesting, if you feel that your sharpener is starting to pull a little bit, bit just put a put an E or R for rubber or whatever, just to let you know that this is the one that you're going to sharpen your eraser pencil with. Yeah? So where were we? Right, so here, for example, now, if I cut in on the edge, and I'm, I'm certainly on the back for this, right? So I'm just coming along that edge a little bit. Let's have a look. Just stay on that edge. I'm just going to create a, a drop shadow. And let's see how this works. So we feather it out a little bit to give us our shadow. There we are. There. You can use your fingers or you can use blending nibs. See the nibs, that just, it works like a charm on parchment. You can buy the, the nibs. Look, these, are, these are great. You can use the holder or you can just blend that in. There you go. Let's go around there a bit. Right, so this is the area we're doing and you can see how how this now is sitting behind 
that, right? And and even though you think there's not much showing, it makes a big difference. And the other thing is, if you want it to be even more dramatic, there's nobody and nothing preventing you from going in on the front. If you feel that you want it to be even darker, look, then you can go in on the front as well. So just know that you've got choices. There you go. Cool. So you can go in on the front, you can go in on the back. It's entirely up to you. You can blend it if you feel it's a little bit too... There you go. Nice. It's just about getting depth, isn't it? I love doing this sort of thing. There. Jill Whiting is going to the ceramic show in Oxford that you mentioned. Good. Say hello to Keshlin. He's there. When is it, Jill? Is it this week? Because I know he was, he put in a night shift to try and get his stock together. Poor bloke. There you go. So this is behind that one, see? So there you go. That's, this is the basic, these are the basic um, rules of engagement. So now when we turn this over, it's just a question of deciding all the different, let's, let's first of all, let's look at, we've done that one, let's look at this area here. Okay, so we'll turn this over and let's look at this one here. So just to recap, we took our eraser pencil and we used our E for eraser sharpener. It's worth doing it, honestly. See, you can see how it roughs up the wood, but it doesn't matter on a rubber. It certainly matters on a, an expensive colouring pencil. Right, so, so we're going to do this one. And this is the, the white eraser is the way to eliminate. Make sure you're on the right, on the shiny side. Now, how do we know, how do we stay on the shiny side? You've got choices here. You can do that so you know that that's the side you're working on. And also be aware that the white is on the front, okay? The white's on the front. 15th of July. Thank you. Dave was talking about us going to go up there. So we may see you there. It's a bit of a trek for us. All depends what's going on with Dad, really, at this stage in our lives. So that's the thing, isn't it, with elderly parents? You've really got to, got to stay close to base, haven't you? Right, so you can see how this, again, because we're working on the shiny side, even though the line art's there, let's say here, let's, let's look at this here, I can run across the line art, look, and create highlights. But because we drew on the front, isn't it brilliant parchment? Let's see. Because we drew on the front, you don't affect the lines. So clever. Well, I think so. Right, so we're working on this. Now, let's do some shading. So I would say it's always a good idea, even though you can't see it through the... You can't see it instantly. If we, for example, we want to... We're going to take this and we're going to, this is at the front. So first of all, we've got, um, we've got a little bit of shading to do here, haven't we? This bit here. So we'll get some shading going there around that edge because it's sitting in front of this one. So, so this is first, is that we're going to add, have a look. Let's add some shadows under here, yeah? So I'm using the Payne's gray, I'm using the lighter gray, possibly for the sake of, for the sake of the, the cameras, I may go a little bit darker than I would usually. Hmm? So let's do this. And this one's in front of this one too. So we might add a little bit of shadow along here as well. Let's do that too. OK. 
Okay, so this will drop this one back. Have a look. That will work. And this one's behind this one, so we we'll keep going. And then this one's behind this one too, so let's add a little bit of shadow there too. I think so. See if this works. You know, and the thing is, if you overcook it, what I love about this, okay, is if you feel you've overcooked it, then you just take your, your eraser pencil and you knock it back. That'll show you. So let's have a look. So, so we're getting the shadows going here. Let's see what it looks like on the front. It will be more subtle on the front. Where are we? So you can't really, you, when I say you can't see it, you can, but it needs to be, it's going through parchment, it's going through colour. So don't be afraid to add a bit more depth. There you go. And like I said, if it's not dark enough for you and you feel you want to add a bit more, then you just go straight on the front, don't you? That's not a problem either. This is a real lovely technique. Have a look. Now, let's leave that for the while because I think in a minute I'm, I can see that you're not going to be able to see much. But if I come in on the front, you'll get it. There you go. Okay, now we're getting there. Yeah? Let's do a little bit around here. So you don't want to make it too dark, otherwise it just looks a bit ominous. That'll do. Looking better already. See? There. So, we can do this. We can do this. Ah, oh, it's so nice to just concentrate on art for a half an hour. So nice. <laughs> what a relief. See, so, doesn't that look good? So we're getting there now. You can see it building, can't you? And then so let's stick with the front though, because this one is the one that I want to I want to drop it back. Right. This has got this needs shade now. So let's go to the shiny side. Let's do that. And the first thing we want to do is go round the actual, let's go around the outside of the ammonite, right? So I'm using the dark colour just because I know that you won't see it. I can feel that you're not seeing it very well. Everything all right with everybody? Hey, how's it going? Funny old times at the moment, aren't they? Funny old times. Dave read me out something really interesting this morning and I thought, yeah, it's so true, especially given this, you know, because it's all under the sea and water and that. And he was telling me, he was reading something out to me, he reads, he reads wise books, my husband, and um, and it's, 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 it's from the Tao philosophy really, right, and it was talking about the river. I've often said, oh, you can't push the river, you know, you can't push the river. The river flows. What Dave was reading to me this morning was that the, the river has its path, you know, like life. The river has its path and then it works its way around pebbles or around stones and boulders, over pebbles. You know, little things don't, don't redirect it. Um, but larger stones, for example, um, if they are dropped into the river, then the river has to go round them. And in, in life as well, you know, when, when a big rock um, is placed in your path, then you, the life, the water, have to adapt, don't you? You know, um, and really that's, that's how it feels in my life at the moment. Um, and it's been like that for quite a while. And the thing with dad now is, you know, we're just having to, you have to adapt to what is, you know, you can't, you can't just plow on. This is the way it's always been. And this is the way it's going to stay. Well, actually it isn't the way it's, 
it's always been and you can't stay like this so you know you have to you have to adapt depending on on what gets put in your path you know you it's like the water water will find its way around life will find its way around and like i said it's 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 how you react and how you adapt isn't it which one am i on there this one yeah done that one let's do this one and i just um I really digested what Dave said to me because it, I thought, yeah, it's so true really, you know. Um, you kind of have to go with it, stay calm. Getting agitated won't help. Doesn't help at all, you know. I was speaking to a lady at the hospital, at the Medway Hospital yesterday. Oh, they're fabulous. I tell you what, you can't, you can't believe the pressure that these people work under at the hospital well you can and she said that you know they're they're hitting what i think she called it black line which means i said what does that mean then and she said it means that um there are more people i mean the medway hospital is a very 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 busy hospital um but she said basically what that means is in easy speak there are more people coming in the in the front door then I leave in by the back door. So the queues are starting, you know, and they're, they've got hundreds of people waiting for a bed and they just don't have the beds. And, and this is a vastly, this is a huge hospital, huge hospital. And they're still trying to do the best they can. See, now this bit comes round and it, so the depth is there, isn't it? Like that. See, so we're darkening that area, isn't it lovely? Isn't that lovely? There you are. You come round, see? And it creates real depth. This is the shadow here now. Yeah. And if you wanted to, because it's a turquoise one, if you want to, you can add some shadow in there. Look, you can add a bit of... I wonder what will happen if we add a bit of... a little bit of turquoise, you know? You can always add re-add a little bit of colour where you've taken it out. I wonder. If we don't like it, should we try it? So we've put a bit of turquoise in there. Let's see what happens when we turn it over. Oh, yeah. See how you add a bit of depth? Look, a bit of colour. That's quite nice. But what's interesting is the depth here. This is where we're going for, is this bit. You see how we're darkening to create the depth? See, flat as a pancake, isn't it? And But here, just working on the back. Isn't it lovely? Are you doing this with me? Yeah, so so the river, you know, and it flows. It flows around the stones and we adapt. We dodge, we bend, we sway, you know. That's the best way. It's no good standing there and protesting. You've got to go with the flow, haven't you? You know, it is what it is, as we keep saying here in the shack hey it is isn't it you know and the thing about that i feel is that you 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 find that if you if you go with the flow literally go with the flow and you adapt to what is rather than what you think it should be then you're always living in the solution. You're always, rather than living in a problem, it's not going the way I want it to. Which things seldom do, I find, right? So rather than living in the problem and trying to control what's going on, which, which doesn't often, you know, doesn't go well, well, very well when you do that. There, doesn't that look good? Right? So rather than living in the problem and, and pushing back and getting stubborn and, you know, I think the best thing to do is go with it. Just go with it. Go around, adapt. And then you're always living in the solution. It's a bit deep, this, isn't it? <laughs> I know. I oh, know. Deep as the ocean. But it's true. 
Well, I think so anyway. There. Do you know what I love about this as well? The back is just as beautiful as the front. Let's have a look at this one now. Doesn't that make, see, doesn't that look lovely before and after? It's good, isn't it? So we could take the lighter one. I wonder if we could add a little bit of, you know, depth. Because as it goes round, you get depth on the... It's like that, isn't it? It's, it undulates. So let's see. See what happens if... Because we've got the depth now. We've certainly got... There's definitely depth there, right? So I wonder if... See what happens if we go over the line. Does this give us depth here too? Let's just try it. See, to my mind, this is also a real, like, it's very therapeutic, this, isn't it? This is cheap therapy for me, to be able to just doodle something on a bit of parchment. Yeah, yeah, see? See, so you're getting the depth. Oh, that's nice. So you're working on the actual line now, here. So you can go across the line that way. Let's have a look. See if this is working. It's not hard, is it? We're just adding a little bit of depth either side of the lines. So you can go across the line. This looks good. Have a look. So once we've done one of the ammonites, we can move on to one of these. These are pretty cool. Different tricks. Let me show you tricks and tips. And then I can't wait to see your lovely artwork. Have a look. Okay. I reckon this is going to look good. Let's have a look if that's helped. Oh, yeah. See? See how it's created more shadow? Hmm. It's good, isn't it? Are we close enough? I think so. I think we are. Do you think we should put a little bit of depth around the outside here? I'm going to sharpen my... I've got the right one. F eraser. Cut, 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 cut. Okay. C... See, I think it's going to look lovely. Hmm. So I think it's good for this stuff too. So finishing touch, you see, you can add the real darkness on the front if you want to. Maybe do that right at the end. Look, this looks good, doesn't it? Is it quick and simple? Well, it's therapy. <laughs> it's therapy quick and simple. This is a great way to hone your colouring and shading skills as well. Doesn't that look lovely? Hmm? So we're getting the depth now, you see. We're getting the depth. It's cool. What side are we on here? We're on the front. Right, back to the back. Back to the back. So what I wanted to do now is have a look at these ones. These are pretty cool. So let's take our, we're on the back, so no, let's go to the front because we, let's, let's put some little, we're going to put little marks like this on the, on here. So you could do this on loads of things. Let's do it on this one here, right? Quite, make them big. There's a method in my madness. When I say big, I don't mean big, big. I just mean big enough so there's enough white inside them, okay? These are a little bit on the small side. I might have to add a few larger ones in there to show you a trick. Right, these are a bit larger. That's okay. This is a toadstool trick, really. If you were doing toadstools, it'd be a great way to do it. Hmm. That's quite nice, this little cluster here. There are a few here as well. Should we put some on there? It's good. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm. Okay. So, so the thing is, when you turn this over now to the shiny side, right, the, this is a, the other magic about parchment. So I can't get into those little dots to make them white. I can't. This is great for larger areas, but it won't work for the little dots. So now let's try something different. Let's take our 
You got a pink mat? Have you got a pink mat? So the the um, parchment mat, isn't it? The pink one. I see the black mat in the starter kit. In the, that also has um, it also has a soft. I'll show you. It has a soft top. Look. So you got this for the coloring, and on the back it's soft. And you could, if you don't want to go through the work, let me show you. Put that down first, a little bit of plastic, and then we're working on the back, on the shiny side. We want to see if this works. So take your tools from the starter kit. What we got here? Number two. See? One, two, one with a little ball, and then you've got three and four. This is all in the in the groovy starter kit, isn't it? Um, but you could buy these separately as well. But let's say, for example, now. Uh, I've got that little bit of plastic. It just stops you going through the parchment. It just stops it. And the number two, now I can, on the back, see, I couldn't get into these areas with my eraser. No way. Of course I can't. But let's have a look. When you do this, see, so this stops you. See, it's coming out white. Can you see that? No, you can't see that on there. You can see it if I bring it up. Like... Hang on, let me stand up. Uh... Where are we? There. Can you see the whiteness in there? Have a look here. I've done it here as well. Let's go to this one so you can see it here in larger. So we turn it over working on the back. Okay, so I'm just suggesting this is a really great way. Right, let me just make sure I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, that's it. So if you wanted to, see, you can use the, it's just, and the plastic sheet stops you going through. See how it makes it whiter? There you go. So you're just stretching the parchment, you see? Stretching it. And it gives you that lovely, this is the white work that we were always talking about. Let's have a look. Yeah, you see it's coming out white. See that one there? Right, these four dots. There's, there are some of these. Right, turn it over to this side. Let's have a look. So we'll just stretch the parchment. So in these little bits, that's what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say is, where you can't get in with an eraser, you can make white by using an embossing tool and a, on a soft mat. That works. Works really well. And you go in once, let it cool down, then go again, and it will go whiter. Let's have a look. See? That's a really cool thing to do. So that's worth remembering, isn't it? So we're back over here now. And we can, we can add white marks. So I'm using black with a piece of plastic to stop myself going through. And you can also, if you're feeling flush and you haven't got the black one, you can buy, you could treat yourself to this one, which a lot of the parchers use. It's the pink excellent. And it's just, it's a real good matte, soft for white work. It's not so, it's harder, if you know what I mean. So you can, but to be honest, you don't need it. It's a luxury. But it's a nice luxury, if you fancy it. There you go. Let's have a look. Yay. See? So you get these lovely little... But you can see why I said go a little bit larger on the... But doesn't that look good? So you can get white by using a white Posca pen. You can get white by using the property of the parchment. And you could also, if you wanted to, see, and the other thing is, now it's starting to feel a bit more like Braille because you're you're stretching the parchment, so you're starting to get texture where you're doing that. Now, where did I put the number four one? So let's say this bit here, see? So if I wanted to, I can just add a little bit of a... Add a bit of white... 
Yeah. So you said the design of parchment is exactly what it is. It's it's parchment. It does the job for you. This is nice. Now I think I'm going to go again on that one. Are so you just adding white work? If you go into the smaller. Just use the the tool that fits best. There we are. This will look good. And the more often you do it, the whiter it will get. So we're adding some really nice white highlights now. That looks good, doesn't it? Now let's have a look what we're doing. Back to the front to, to observe what we're doing. Yeah. So I've shown you the trick with the, let's just recap. Sip a tea and let's have a look at what we're doing. Right, so I've shown you how to get the highlights going there. I've shown you how to bring out the little white, proper white sharp areas if you want to do that. And now what we're doing is we're starting to add layers. So you can see where we've been and where we're going. So this area here, if we want to drop these behind one another, then we have to think in in layers so this one is on the top let's say right so let's have a look what happens if we take the gray paint gray is always a good one and you can see i'm just cutting along hmm, do you know what barbara make sure you're on a hard surface because you can otherwise you're stretching the parchment it doesn't know do you want me to go white <laughs> it's saying i could hear it going do you want me to go white or do you want me to go dark what make your mind up take the mat away all right, all right, calm down, calm it, calm it. All right, so it needs to be hard for this to work. All right, I heard you. Right, so let's just get the shadow in. Let's just get a dark, let's get a dark edge in there, and then we can always because we're working on the on the dark side, on the back side, on the shiny side. So, so this is going to create, it's nice to do. I look forward to seeing all your lovely artwork. There you go. Come along here as well, because that's in front again. So that can darken up a bit. Hey. Hmm. Who's watching Wimbledon? Anybody watching Wimbledon? I haven't really had time. That's okay though. I um, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy tennis. There. See how that's starting to come? Now where's that? No, there you go. So we can just smooth that out a little bit. So blend it with a blending tool. And that now sits behind that one. See what it looks like on the front. Yeah, you got it? It's lovely. See, the thing about parchment, what I find is because of the translucency, and we're working with all the different colours, so this one's in front of that one. So let's do that one next. That one's that one. This one's this one. Let me check it again. This one here. This one here. Yeah. So we're going to come down here now. Right. Let's get quite dark under there, shall we? Come on. This is the darker part of the water. There you go. So we're going to cut that one in front of that one because that's definitely a layering job, isn't it? Does it look good? Hmm? Did you see Val Hodgson's work? <laughs> good Lord. When I showed you on, um, it was brilliant really, because I showed it to you on Monday, what our friend Val did. And it, it really, I can't tell you how much it helped me, right, to, um, to it just gave me a kickstart. I'd have kind of lost my way a little bit. And when you're the bus driver and, and, and a couple of hundred people are following you, you really, you need a bit of a, a hand, don't you? 
So it was a real godsend. Look, see, so that one's that one. Now I'm going to go for this one here. Um, it was a real godsend to see Val's work because it just, it just gave me the ideas. You know, it just said, here we are, love. Don't worry not. I've got this. And it was great. She just took the steering wheel. She didn't even realize she'd done it. But it was like, oh, what a relief because I kind of, you know, I was panicking a little bit and I didn't know where we were headed. And and then she just said, look, you can use the netting. You can, you know, and that, just that on its own, it was like, oh, that's great as a filler. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Val, you know. And the irony is I showed her the netting ages ago and she gave it back to me. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. No, I think that's that's really that kind of underpins what we do here in the shack, don't you think? Have a look. Doesn't this look lovely? Oh, see, and then on this side, mm, it's more muted. So we've done that. So now I need to do this one here. Okay, this one. This is the line here. So we need to make that darker. Have a go. Payne's grey, grey colour. We're going to go in here and then we'll feather it out. So we'll come in, cut in. Let's just do this. Come on. This needs to be quite dark. See, the thing is, because you're working on the back, it's quite good because you can... It's quite forgiving, isn't it? But you can work on the front as well if you want it vibrant. Can you see this okay? It's enough to make a difference, doesn't it? So this is going to be the last, this is going to be the last session on these ammonites. And then next week, I really would like, I hope I get enough time to prepare it. We're going to do more ammonites. We're going to stay under the, we're going to stay with the fossils. Not that we're fossils, mind. We're going to stay with the fossils. But we're going to take a different look at it, a different aspect. How's that sound? Doesn't that look super, eh? Even if I say so myself. There. And we'll just blend that colour out so it's not so harsh. But it won't be harsh anyway on, on the other side. You watch. Dave's all over these pen holders, these things. Cool, we've had a game with these. You know, um, I was listening to the news yesterday that was it Tesco's have taken all the um, the Heinz things like tomato ketchup and what have you, and I immediately understood. I got it. I understood why why it was happening. You know, because Tesco's now are, are refusing to. Well, no, it doesn't matter. It was, it, the bottom line is. You can't get Heinz tomato ketchup at Tesco's anymore, right? Now, who decided that the price was clearly Tesco's want to sell it at a certain price and Heinz can't make it for that price. So at some point, they must have been at loggerheads, right? And you can understand it from Tesco's point of view. They want to protect the prices for their customers. They don't want it to go through the roof. But as a manufacturer, you see, I understand it from Heinz's point of view because I bet their raw materials have gone through the roof as well. So, you know, it's six of one and half a dozen of the other here. But at some point, it was a lose-lose because because Heinz lost a contract with Tesco. And Tesco have lost your business when you want to go and buy Heinz. So, really, <laughs> they need me on their board because they should have found a compromise. You know, the supermarkets are putting the squeeze on the manufacturers. And, you know, yeah, sure, they want to protect. They, they say they want to protect their customers. <laughs> They, all right, so they want to protect their customers. Um, but the bottom line is, as a manufacturer, see, I understand Heinz. 
Beans means Heinz. <laughs> I love Heinz, right? But the bottom line is I can go somewhere else and buy Heinz. So Tesco's, they missed a, they missed a trick there, didn't they? Now, where were we? Ah, yeah, here we were. And then when you hear on the radio, you know, I shouldn't really listen to it. It's just ridiculous. You know, oh, here we go again. You know, prices are going to go through the roof in October. And um, yes, of course, it's a it's a consideration. Of course, it's a. But I think sometimes all this scaremongering. Now, doesn't that look lovely, though? Hey, do you like that? I think it's a little bit extreme. Maybe we need to pan it out. Am I on the right side? Yeah. Um, thing is, all this scaremongering and telling us, oh, doom and gloom, you know, it just causes a run on tomato ketchup. <laughs> In a minute, we'll all be like, oh, better stock up on. <laughs> you, better, you better stock up. You better stock up because in a minute, you won't be able to get any tomato ketchup. Do you know, I could live without tomato ketchup. I could if push came to shove. Be hard. <laughs> but I must, I must pop in to Sainsbury's and buy some quickly. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I bet it? I bet it's not good for you. I bet it's full of chemicals. Hey? I remember when we used to live in California. Now, hang on, before I start waffling, let's have a look what we're doing. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, we've done that lovely bit. Isn't that superb? Yes, Barbara, it is. Let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look at this one. I want to put a drop shadow on the on these bits. I wonder if that will work. I'm on the front. I'm doing it deliberately on the front because I reckon that's going to look really good. Let's see. If we do a... Right, turn it over. Let's have a look. Um, yes, yes, yes. When we lived in California years ago, when the kids were little, um, we lived in Monterey, right, which is right by Salinas, which is, it's there's this Salinas agricultural belt that runs not the length of California, but a long way from, the, like, northern California, sort of, 15 miles inland, there's this agricultural belt, um, which is like half the world's produce. In those days, they used to say that half the world's produce, fruit and veg, used to come from that Salinas belt. It was massive, you know, and, and primarily the pickers are Mexicans. Of course they are, right? which is why my heart breaks when I hear about migrant workers being found dead in trucks. It's just beggar's belief, right? But these, these migrant workers, they do this back-breaking, unbelievably hard, hot work. They're bent over double, eight, nine, ten hours a day. And there's a reason why I'm saying this, because you can see truck after truck after truck of tomatoes, 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 you know, but they were, they were in great big hopper trucks, not, you know, not in nice boxes ready to go to Marks and Spencers. These were, these were hoppers of tomatoes, like tonnage. And you'd get one, one truck at the front and it'd have maybe four or five of these great big um, hopper trucks full to the gunnels and if they went over a bump all the tomatoes there'd be tomatoes popping around on the motorway and you get squished tomatoes but the point was that these were like tomatoes that were going to make ketchup that was their destiny they were ketchup tomatoes they weren't going to go in the lovely little you know with the little green bits still on it on the vine tomatoes on the vine cost two quid more no 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 these were they they were born and destined to be ketchup. And now Tesco's has rejected them. <laughs> oh, no. It's a hard life being a tomato. If you, you know, it's not easy. You know? 
But I just remember when 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 we were when we lived in California, if you you were sitting behind, this is what I wanted to show you. If you were, where's the top? Right, top's there. So we'll put the shadow under here. Um, if you were on the motorway, on the highway number one, which is where we live next to, and these big old trucks would come out from the Salinas belt. And um, you knew which were the tomato ketchup ones. They were going for mush. And you could see it as well. On with fruit, you know, if the fruit was wasn't pristine, because we need you know perfect fruit now, don't we? Right? It would go into into. I mean, the new the nutritious value of these tomatoes, or the nutritious value of the of the the fruit that got picked that went into hoppers to make mush, whatever the mush was going to be, baby food or whatever, right? Um, Nutritionally, it was still there, but visually, you know, we, you, we've got this thing about it has to be a perfect apple and it has to be a, you know, it's ridiculous. I'm thinking I've told you this before when I used to, when I used to do, because um, we live in Kent, we lived in Kent, didn't we, um, as kids, and we went, it's about fruit picking down in Kent, and... Um, and I remember that was backbreaking work as well. And then we went fruit sorting. Fruit sorting, it was called. So we had to go, went in these great big hangers, like factory hangers. They were massive. And they were, we'd, we'd go on these conveyor belts. And um, I think we were the only white people there. It was Indians, all Indians. They did this backbreaking work in our country, right? Elderly Indian ladies in saris. That was who picked our fruit. And then there was us young kids, school kids, right, trying to make a make a few bob. And it was it was pennies, it was pittance what they what they paid. See how you get the shadow. Anyway, and I can remember because we went to grammar school. Right, but get this. I'm sure I've told you this before. Because we went to grammar school, the foreman, the gang, the gang leader or whatever he was called, ganger, he decided that we could, we could, <laughs> we could detect a Marks and Spencer apple better than all the old Indian ladies. Right. So this is how it went. They were on the Tesco's, Tesco's and Sainsbury's were over there. Marks and Spencer's grammar school girls. This is ridiculous. I'm telling you this because it was ridiculous at the time, still ridiculous. So those poor Indian ladies, they were going like the bloody clappers, right? Because they had to pick. And as these apples were flying past, they had to pick apples and put them in the, you know, those like polis, not polystyrene, it's like, like pulp. Yeah. So they, they had these packs of four and they had these packs of four here and they had to pick four apples, pick four apples, piecework, like going like the clappers. Marks and Spencer's, not just any old apple. As this river of apples was flying past with Granny Smith, for example, on Christmas. Like, there's a perfect one. That's that. This was us. I mean, like, give the Indian ladies a break. Let them do the Marks and Spencer's one. This was it. Rivers. Right, there's another one. This is how, this is the speed we worked at. If we saw one, it had a tiny little blemish on it. Back it went in. That was a Tesco's apple. Yeah. Unbelievable. But the apples all came from the same tree. People, the apples all came from the same trees. We were in the same, we were in the same farm. <laughs> I'll tell you what, human beings have got a lot to answer for. Haven't they? Anyway, that's my little bitch about buying fruit that's misshapen. Can we do that? Do you think we could insist... I think we can make our own choices. We have a we have a, an organic farm shop. It's a bit expensive, but they're not they're not taking the Mickey. They they charge the right price, really, you know, for all the work. And and they have misshapen apples and and pears and things that look a bit 
you know, not visually perfect. And, um, and we buy those things and they taste wonderful, wonderful. Why wouldn't you, you know? Or they get made into puree. <laughs> there you go. So, so let's have a look. Where was I? I was on the shading. I'm sure here it is. Look, see, so you can get a real three dimensional. See that if you put a little bit of shadow and you can go in on the front, you can go in on the back and you just swing back and forth like that. Don't that look lovely? And see, and then because we can see, you mix it up a little bit. Now let's turn this over and we're going to go, where are our tools? Right. So I'm going in with my number two tool. I'm going in again on the white because I reckon this is going to pop even more like that. And what about if the black's on that side? Well, then let's put some white shading with the number three tool. Let's try it. What happens if we put the number three or maybe number four even? Hmm? That's better. Let's see if this works. So we're going leather, feathery white work. Yeah, look. So you're going on the opposite side of where you put the black. This looks lovely. Okay, let's do that. See if it works. It's playtime, friends. This is play. And it's so beautiful to do. And then you just... Just build, just build your art, hey? No. So this now, we're using the parchment, we're stretching it, we're working on the back, just gently stretching. So we're adding highlights, because it certainly gets whiter when you stretch the parchment. I love, look, oh, see? See how you bring it to life? There. So just check out where we've been today. And this one, oh, look, it's 11 o'clock already. Oh, it's addictive. It's addictive. See, and I could take the dark, the pencil from the polychromos, and you could add it to the front. Look, just gently feather it through. Doesn't this look lovely? We've got a difference straight away. You can use the colours of the, or you can use grey, the greys, can't you? Look. Very addictive, friends. So there you go. That'll do for today. Did you enjoy that? And I think uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy this for weeks to come. This is going to be my... My safe place when I when I'm when I'm having to change and adapt and the river of life is flowing in a different direction to the way I'd like it to maybe I'll just use this to rethink and reframe you know I think it's important that we we live in the solution and not in the problem there you go. So have a fabulous Thursday. We're off to see my dad in hospital now. And um, and I, I hope to see you on Sunday, 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock on Create and Craft. And we'll celebrate Jane Nestorenko. What a legend that lady was and still is. So thank you, Paul, for your help. And uh, Enjoy the sunshine. I look today on Wonderground and it's a little bit overcast at the moment in the southeast, but next week we're going to have a lovely sunny week. There you go. Happy days. Take care. Bye-bye now. Be safe.